And I remember, you know, back home in Vietnam, those, uh, let me fur, you know, peddler, they have the three-wheeler, and they just go from, you know, neighborhood, you know, from neighborhood to the neighborhood. Uh, and they have, let me see, two pieces of uh, bamboo, bamboo stick. And, you know, children, you know, grown up or whatever, if we could afford it, we say, okay, far, far, come. And then we just knew we didn't have any chair or anything. It was very simple. The broth that just have it. I don't know what did they put in there. It, it was so good. That's all I remember. <laughs> but cannot find it anymore, you yeah. see. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Tammy and I'm an editor. I'm Jacqueline and I'm a portrait photographer and I'm also a UX designer. Hi, I'm Tobin Nguyen. Yeah, uh, Ti Nguyen. Dan Nguyen. My name is Vivian and I'm a chef. So 100% Vietnamese. <laughs> I'm Vietnamese. I'm Vietnamese. I'm Vietnamese. I'm Vietnamese. See Vietnamese but see born in America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, daikon chicken pho. Alright, this is interesting. This quick version of Vietnamese pho has you add the standard garnishes such as scallions and sprouts right to the pot. Right to the pot? No, it's pot. <laughs> Spicy daikon radishes stand in for rice noodles. No noodle, and they use daikon instead of noodle. Never heard of that before. <laughs> daikon, go uh, kai. Yeah, that's yeah, kai. That's usually we use that for the soup. Yeah, for the Made broth. The taste of the soup. Yeah. A lot better. Two small daikon radishes peeled. One tablespoon of olive oil. Okay. We don't use olive oil in Vietnamese, but that's okay. In the daikon, we put in with the meat, with the bone, to simmer, to make the broth taste nice. I think uh, this one, they would like to make the vegetarian pho. Pho have to have, you know, bánh pho, that means... Noodles. Noodles. Only thing so, yeah. that is Vietnamese sounding about it is that there's one teaspoon of fish sauce. Yeah, don't call it pho. So, this one more like soup. This is soup. I don't know, like I can't get over the daikon radish noodles thing. <laughs> I can't help it up. Because pho, you have, the main thing is rice noodle and uh, star, what do you call it? Star of any. Star of any. Those two is the make pho. Daikon chicken soup. Yeah, right. <laughs> daikon chicken soup. I may try it to see, you know, really how it tastes. Well, likely. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try it. Yeah. Eat it. Yeah, I'll <laughs> eat it. <laughs> pho with broccoli and quinoa? Wait, who writes these? Are these all gluten-free? Broccoli and pho. High-protein grain in vegetarian pho broth instead of noodles again. The broccoli is thinly sliced and steamed separately. Not pho either. Yeah, no we... spicy and uh, no noodle. We cannot say that for. But like there... this one more for people who went to get on diet. So... Yeah, but you can you can eat fun on a diet. The whole if the title is wrong. The, the whole thing is the recipe fine for you want to eat whatever yeah. you cook with. We and shouldn't eat, call it pho. Uh, not a name, that name. <laughs> Wrong name. This one. Has... Rename it. This one Japanese <laughs> soup. Yeah. <laughs> In pho, real pho, they don't use soy sauce. No. They use uh, fish, fish sauce. Fish you know, sauce. Like, you know, ramen, ramen noodle. noodle. You can use soy, soy sauce. sauce. But the with pho, never. Never use soy sauce. Never. <laughs> Vietnamese people aren't going to eat this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Would you eat this? No, I would not eat this. Why not? Um, it's just really weird, maybe, if, if he had sold it to me as a different dish. Well, I think the garnishes are spot on. That's pretty. But this one doesn't have a rice noodle either. Two main ingredients, spicy and, you know, the noodle. That will make pho. If you don't have noodle, you cannot call pho. No. Oh my god, for real? Pho is that the name of the pho? Name in wow. there. Oh wow! Pho burrito recipe. It's just, this is actually interesting. I, I, I like this concept. So in this one, they you brought as a dipping sauce. But I can get close to this one better than family with this one than the other two. Really? Because you got rice noodle in there. So this for you is more real pho? Closer, closer. <laughs> <laughs> Without a burrito, it would be like pho sao. The ingredients listed here are actually very close to traditional pho broth, so I, I think this could be a winner. Mm, I may eat that, but I don't call pho burrito. What, do you, what, what would you call that? I call 
burrito soy sauce <laughs> is I, it I have... they use nước mắm yeah that's but with sauce. some uh, if they do stir fry they got like the um, meat pho sao I mean no broth in it they can use some soy sauce in there okay so char onions and ginger all right okay it's actually done properly because it's like finally somebody saying char the onions and the gingers nobody has done that so far it's the most fun like recipe that i've seen so far would you would you think it's accurate to call it a pho burrito i would say it's pretty damn close if anything yeah they're pour, pouring honey into a bowl and tamarinds wait Look like they tried to make uh, some kind of salad. Is he trying to make a vermicelli noodle soup? Is this supposed to be trendy? This is an amazing jar. <laughs> Pho should have the flat rice noodle instead of the skinny. Um, uh, yeah. Can call min. Yeah, min that uh, from make from mung bean is another form of you know noodle. Our vermicelli is never ever used in pho, but I wouldn't call this pho in a jar. I'm sorry. I would just call it chicken vermicelli noodles in a jar. Yeah, I would call this one min in the jar, but then not pho. Nothing related to pho. There is actually ten basic ingredients that goes into a pho. There's fish sauce, cinnamon, clove, coriander, ginger, dry tangerine rinds, onions, black cardamom, star anise, and uh, pepper. Two weeks or a week before I'm supposed to come home, I'll give them a list of what I want to eat. Literally, no, because they'll call me and say, what do you want to eat? What do you want me to make? Food is important because they don't know how to express love in any other way. And feeding feeding me is, is it's how they say, I love you. Pho is love for sure. <laughs> it's like the first thing you eat if you're a child. That's like, that's the first thing that it's introduced mostly. Mm, yo, that's naturally, uh, it seems like uh, Vietnamese, they know how to eat pho even <laughs> when they're three years old. I've been eating pho my whole life. For me, Vietnamese food just makes me think of home. I was born in Vietnam. Uh, we came here, I spoke with people in the early 80s, and I grew up in Brooklyn, actually. I think this is the most quintessential dish. I cannot imagine my childhood growing up without having pho. But in Vietnam, we don't cook pho at home. You see, and in Vietnam, we eat pho for breakfast or late at night. For my parents, even when we want to go, they load everyone in the car, go to eat. She doesn't cook at home. And until we came to a nice state, no restaurant nearby, Vietnamese restaurant nearby. So everyone learned how to cook for at home. Yeah, food is really important in Vietnamese mm. culture. When my mom's mom passed away, my grandma who raised me, when she was um, about to pass away, my mom to help us, the kids, understand what was happening, um, she said, well, she can't enjoy food anymore. Then we understood, oh, okay, it's time. Um, and so it helped us understand and cope but it, it was such a powerful statement because and that even a child can understand well if you can't enjoy food then there's what joy do you have in living so then you can't feel too sad about it because it's like well i mean she should be able to enjoy living and if she can't enjoy living then okay my father he in military but he lucky he retired before the communist took over, so he doesn't have to go to re-education camp. So, and we escaped by boat. We went to uh, Malaysia. Malaysia, stay in there for 11 months, and we came to United States because he in military, so American let us in. We escaped from the communist country. The people called us as a boat people. We came here in 1980 with three words of English, good, bad, and okay. <laughs> so we start again everything. <laughs> Vietnamese food is just so good. Like it has a lot of cultural significance for us. Pho is Vietnam, so. Pho is Vietnam. Because like in Vietnam, every corner you see the tiệm pho. It means pho restaurant. When you make pho, you think about family. You make the way you like it and you enjoy it, you know, together. And especially I have two grand dogs and they both <laughs> love pho. <laughs> dogs. dogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dogs eat pho, they love pho, especially pho gà. I feel really happy that so many different people who aren't Vietnamese love and enjoy pho. Now you make me want to have a bowl of pho, why? <laughs>